Welcome everybody to the weekly uh, class in Chassidus in English, right here at the Chabad of Rechavia. Tuesday evening, today is Rosh Chodesh, Rosh Chodesh Tammuz of the fourth, the fourth Hebrew month. I'm happy to share with you that Thursday evening, in two days, we're going to have a big event in honor of the Rebbe's yard site, Gimel Tammuz, which is going to be on Thursday. The event will be at 8 o'clock at the Mayan Shul. The flyers are right here. We'll give them out uh, now or after the shir. Please join us and spread the word. The, uh, the event will be focused around the Rebbe's innovation of utilizing modern technology for the purpose of the service of Hashem, spreading Yiddishkeit, Torah, and mitzvahs. And um, Chabad is definitely number one up there across the world. Um, and uh, bringing Yiddishkeit to every corner of the world, especially through modern technology and um, materialistic uh, mediums. This mimer that we're learning now, the Hasidic Discourse, is in Yanash Torah Chasidut, on the essence of Hasidus, which the Rebbe in 1966, or 65, it was just before January. And what the Rebbe discusses, we've been discussing over the past couple of months, is the very interesting concept of what makes Hasidus so special. And that is that Hasidus does have many great qualities, but that's not what makes Hasidus special. What makes Hasidus special is something intrinsic, which because of it, it's special. As an outcome of that, it has all kinds of uh, side, side issues and side um, um, advantages and specialties. Today, what we're going to start learning in the next chapter, we're going to start learning how Hasidus adds to every part of Torah. In other words, some might think that you have the revealed part of the Torah, the mystical part of the Torah, and also Hasidus. Or, Pshat, Remes, Drush, Sod, the simple meaning, the hidden meaning, and also Hasidus, or one of the above. Or, Hasidus is an entirely different subject. And it's the core of everything, and therefore it adds to every part of the Torah. I hope we get to the example that the Rebbe brings from Modani. Worst case scenario, Bezrat Hashem next week. But I do want to mention that this concept is divine providence that we're learning this just about 24 hours before the Rebbe's Yeratzeit, which really captures who the Rebbe is. The Rebbe is a, u- a unique individual, which by the way, the Rebbe himself writes us in a letter of Gimel Tammuz this day, the half a year after the previous Rebbe passed away in 1950. The Rebbe writes, on this day of Gimel Tammuz, which later to be his yard site, what a Rebbe is. It's exactly the same point that we've been learning for the last couple of months. Some, may be, some people might say that a Rebbe is a Torah knowledgeable person. Another person might say that a Rebbe, uh, a Rebbe should be a great leader, leadership qualities. Another person will say that uh, he has a lot of time to, to, to do... To, to personal uh, um, uh, guidance, yechidus, pers- uh, private audience, and there are many other things that, that a person could say what a Rebbe's job should be. But the Rebbe says there's one point which is an essential point, and because of that, he has all of the above. It's exactly what we've been saying, it's the same pattern we've been saying all, all along. That's what Hasidus is, that's what Mashiach is. It's the core, it's the main. It, it's, it's an amazing uh, um, concept, and because of this amazing concept, therefore it has also other special qualities as well. And the reason why I say this is very much connected with the Rebbe's theme in life is because the Rebbe's theme is making peace. Not only making peace amongst people, but make, how, do you, how do you make peace between people? What's the best way? you take a really good high beam light and you zoom in into the neshama 
And you say, hey, you two individuals, why are you fighting? You're brothers. You come from the same core. That's the point. I mean, we can talk on and on, but that's the bottom line. If you're able, the, the more you're able to show how the two individuals are the same, the further you get. I say this, if someone wants to ask me, I always like to talk about matchmaking and, and peace in the home, shalom bayit. So someone wants to ask me, is it better to, have, to match up two people? Which, just today, a, a, a boy, and a young, young man and a young girl were walked by Chabad house and they said, we want to, we want to, we want to have a date inside Chabad. They, they didn't plan it. I said, sure, no problem. They came upstairs here for a few hours. I, th- I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, so I think uh, yeah, that's what Chabad of Rechavi is all about, making more shiduchim. And so someone once asked me, is it better to, 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 match, to make a match between two individuals who are more similar or between two individuals who are, who are more different? I personally said it's better to, to, ma- to make a match between two individuals that are more similar. The truth is, even in Harmony.com and other websites that are not Jewish per se and not Torah observant, they realize more and more what matchmaking is all about. The more, the more compatibilities the two individuals have, the more of a chance there is that it will be long-lasting. So someone could ask, what do you mean? They say opposites attract. Isn't it better to have people that are more opposite? And my answer to that is, oh, don't worry about the opposites. As, as, as close as they might be, as similar as they might be, the fact itself that one is a, ma- a male, the other one is a female, just by the nature of who, they, of, of who they are before, even as being one day old, they're two totally different characters. We don't realize enough how different men and women are. It's just how Hashem made us. It's not good or bad, it's just a fact. So the more compatible we are, the better of a chance it is, Bezrat Hashem, that it will be long-lasting. So I think, obviously, that, that, that two, the two individuals that are considering to date should be as compatible as, as possible. So along those notes, along that note, we can add to say that in Torah itself, also one needs to be, one needs to find how two seemingly different indications in the Torah are really saying the same point. And you can have a machloket, sometimes not so easy. You can have a, a, a dispute between two great rabbis, Beit Hillel, for example, the house of Hillel, and Beit Shammai, the house of Shammai. And it's not just that, God forbid, they had hard feelings once against the other. God forbid, it was, they were just very factual. They, were, they loved each other. But even the Kabbalah says that Shammai's neshama, his soul came from one place, from Gevura. And Hillel's neshama and his holy yeshiva, their neshama came from chesed, kindness. So naturally, they didn't see eye to eye on many issues, mainly halachic issues. So most people, like how are we supposed to find the compatibility between these Torah giants? But the Rebbe, very often, you see a, a, a common denominator between all of the Rebbe's talks that wherever he brings up an issue which can seem to be some kind of machloket, some kind of dispute, he always finds a beautiful explanation how really they're not arguing. They just have a little difference of opinion in a minor detail, which it... it, it, it in the bottom line, it comes out a different, a different total. But in, in essence, in the core, they're not really arguing. They're really, they're really saying one and the same thing in essence. So for example, a classical example is, uh, there are two opinions. One opinion is the opinion of the Zohar, that the Beit HaMikdash, the third temple, is going to come down from heaven. We know that we teach that to children pre-1A. Every mitzvah that you do is a brick, and it, it puts another brick on the Beit HaMikdash in heaven, and when it's ready, the Beit HaMikdash will come down, ready right here down the road, or up the road, up the road in the, in the, in the old city, in the, real, in the real Yerushalayim, in the authentic Yerushalayim. This is also authentic, but you know, you know what I mean. And ready to go. All the Kohanim can start getting to work. It's a question of moments. The other opinion is that Mashiach is going to build the base of Mikdash. The Rambam says, the Rambam, right at the end, the second to last chapter, in the last two chapters, he writes about um, what are the signs and what are the, what's going to happen, what's going to transpire in the Messianic era. 
So he says there, one of the signs that Mashiach is Mashiach Bevadai. Certainly Mashiach, he has Becheskat Mashiach, which we assume that he's Mashiach. Different signs, very interesting. And then he says, If Bana Mikdash Bim Komo. He will build, you hear that those words, he will build the Beit HaMikdash in this place. And he will gather all the Jews from all around the world. That means that he is for sure Mashiach. Okay, so what are the words? He's going to build, he's going to build the Beit HaMikdash. So one second. Is it going to be built in the heaven and come down ready on a, golden pl- on a silver platter? Or is it going to be built by Mashiach? According to the revealed part of the Torah, he's going to build the, Mashiach is going to build the Beit HaMikdash. And if you look at the Zohar, it's going to come down. So the Rebbe, in his classical, beautiful way of, of, of making a harmony between everything, he says, really, like the Zohar says, the Beit HaMikdash will come down from heaven. Mm-hmm. We have a rule in Halakha that someone who puts on the door, you can have a whole building, a bunch of people building the building, but whoever anchors on the door, it's considered as if he built the whole building. So Mashiach will take the door, he'll lock it on, he'll put it, place it in the opening to the Beit HaMikdash, Boom! It's considered as if he built the whole base of Mikdash. So here we have a beautiful way of finding peace, quote unquote, and harmony between different, very different opinions. Uh, in uh, you look at the Nigla, the revealed part of the Torah, the Pnimiyot, the mystical part of the Torah, and it goes on and on. Sometimes we have disputes in the Bavli, the Babylonian Talmud, the Yerushalmi, and the Jerusalem Talmud, and the Rebbe always finds a middle path. It's beautiful to see. Just like it's it's, it's like it's sweet. It's like it's like dripping honey on your tongue. It's like mechayet. It's beautiful. Okay, so hopefully now we're going to start the new subject. Up until now we talked about the concept. How Hasidus is the core of everything and because of that, as an outcome of that, the Hasidus has many, many uh, great advantages. Okay, now we're going to say, we're going to start on page 40... Nine. In the Hebrew, it's uh, chapter eight. In the English, it's page forty-eight. First, we'll start with the Hebrew, then we'll go to the English. So we'll see as, 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 as much as we, as, as far as we get. B'zrat Hashem. Hachayut shetorat hachesidut machnisa b'chol inyanei haolam. The life, the vitality that the Torah, the teachings of Chasidus, infuses into every concept of the world. You have the micro world, which is man, and the macro, which is the world, literally the world, after the parentheses. Beautiful. This it comes from the life that Hasidus adds and brings in to all t- concepts of the Torah, as we're going to see soon. How Hasidus brings an insight and meaningful interpretation into all parts of the Torah. Because of that, as an outcome of that, the Chassidus also brings life into the world the way we know it to be, and into ourselves, into our own being. Ubal Yideh It comes to us through the life that it adds into Torah. Kikol Because everything in the creation, Nimshachim Torah, are drawn down from the Torah. Ubaim Al Yadan, come through it. So we know what the Zohar says, that the Torah is the blueprint of the world. The Almighty God looked into the Torah, which is the blueprint of the world, and based on that, created the world. So one plus one equals two. When you have, when you're able to connect to the, the Pnimiyut, the innermost part of the Torah, that adds so much insight, so much life, into our, into our view of the world and view of ourselves as well. Okay, so let's start. But Torah, Dalit Chalakim. In the Torah, there are four, four portions, generally speaking. There are many, many more than four. For example, the Altar Rebbe quotes in the second page of the Tanya, it's a famous, famous line, Shivim Panim Batorah. There are 70 faces to the Torah. And there are many, many more than 70. It depends how you cut the cake. But generally speaking, there are four. We have Pshat, which is, interesting, Pshat is the literal translation, the literal interpretation. We have a rule, Ein mikra yotze midei pshuto, a verse, which basically refers to the entire Torah, but mainly the 
the Chumash, does not go out of its simple meaning. In other words, there are many more deeper meanings, but I always try to emphasize the simple, basic, for starters. Like the Rebbe would say that, that the Ben Chamesh Mikra. Rashi says that he, that he, that he addresses questions that can arise by a five, it's really a four-year-old child. Ben Chamesh means five, but the Rambam says that th that age, which is based on the Mishnah, is you're in that year. So for example, we have a custom in Chabad that we say every day the, the chapter of Tehillim for your age. So if you're 20, you say chapter 21, because once you're t you, you, you celebrate 20th birthday, you've completed 20 years, and now you're entering into the 21st year. So you're really in your 21st year. We call it 20, because that's that's the amount of years that you've, Baruch Hashem, completed. So the same thing over here. Ben Chamesh Lamikra means in your fifth year. You can start learning Chumash. Ben Eser Mishnah, 10 years you, you learn Mishnah. That's, that's when you're nine and in your 10th year already. So Pshat is number one. You always have to, number one, understand the simple meaning. Once you do that, then you can go further, further on. It doesn't mean that you can't learn a deeper meaning, but I'm just, I'm just trying to emphasize how important it is not to oversee the simple meaning of everything that we learn. Every davening, every pasuk, every verse, everything needs to have, number one, l'chol the simple meaning. Then you go into remez. Remez is like a hint. Okay, it's nice, you have a little hint. Some people like gematrias. That's also a type of remez. Some people like gematria as are, are the numerical <coughs> the numerical value of, of a word. Then you have, like in the second portion of the Tanya, you have different uh, the orders of the letters, different combinations that also represents different words that have similar letters but just different combinations. They have a relationship. It's not like any other language. The holy language of Lashana Kodesh of Hebrew, authentic Hebrew, biblical Hebrew, especially. Is, is amazing, is, is very precise. There's no such language like this in the entire world. Then you have drush, like a medrash. Same word as medrash. Medrash is learning with, uh, with deeper like, stories and, and deeper insights. So then you have number four. That's the Kabbalah. So let's start from the beginning of the paragraph. But Torah, in the Torah, Dalet, Chalakim, we have four portions. Pshat, simple meaning. Remez, a hint. Drush. Deeper learning and sod is Kabbalah, the, the mystical part of the Torah. Here we go. A lot of people think that sod is Hasidus. It's related, it's similar, it's explaining sod, but it's not sod. Torah ta Hasidut machnisa chayut b'chol achad mehem. That's the underlining line of, of this next po portion of this discourse. To the teachings of Hasidus brings life into each and every one of them, each and every one of the above. And when you learn the Rebbe's Sikhs, you can see it amazing. Whether for about a year or two after the Rebbe's mother passed away in the fall of 1964, um, in, in her memory, the Rebbe did amazing, amazing Sikhot on Rashi. He would take a Rashi, and, and he would totally, he wouldn't believe the questions. And then the answer was like, unbelievable. Each one. There's a guy here in Rechavia. Yeah? He lived, he used to live upstairs in 770, and it's called 7, 788. Mm -hmm. And he's not a Chabad guy, but he loves the Rebbe's teaching. He, he what he used to do is, the, the Rebbe would tell someone right before Shabbos which Rashi he's going to be discussing, and the young boys, the young yeshiva boys, would discuss and try to figure out what questions the Rebbe's going to ask, and the answer is much more difficult, but the Rebbe taught a certain way of learning, a derech, a shita, a, 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 a whole method of, of, learning, of learning the Rashi. That's just one example of Rashi. Whether you go to uh, Tanya, there's a whole book on the Rebbe's Chidusha on Tanya. It's amazing. And on, on his father's, Rebbe Lev Yitzchak, the Rebbe's father's teachings, he was a Kabbalist. And the Rebbe would take, that's a great example for the Sod, actually. He would take his father's teachings on the Zohar, and he, based on the, on the Tanya, Geret HaTshuva, and it's just fascinating. So, so once again, the Rebbe shows us how through the teachings of Hasidus, we're going to see soon one example, fascinating example. I'm not sure if we'll get to it today, hopefully. At least we'll try to touch upon something. 
אשר נוסף על זה שבתורת החסידות באו ביורים לעניינים שונים שבכל דלת חלקי התורה, ה-bottom paragraph בית 49, in addition to the fact that in תשעות של חסידות, there are in their explanations for the different subjects in all four parts of the Torah above, mentioned above, שגם זה שולל את הסברה שהחסידות באה בכדי לבאר את החלק הסוד של בתורה בלבד. This statement itself negates the concept, the thought, that Hasidus comes to only explain the portion of salt, the portion of, of the secrets of the Torah, the mystical parts of the Torah. Tapa 51. לימוד החסידות מכניס חיות בכל עניין ועניין, בכל חלקי הפשט רמז דרוש סוד שבו. שלום דיון מהתורה. In every detail of all of the four Portions of the Torah mentioned above that we learn. Chassidus adds it. Not just in the general four portions of the Torah, interpretations of the Torah, but in every detail of them, Chassidus adds a lot. That's because Chassidus lives. Not lives because someone else makes it live. But lives, really, that's like Hashem. Hashem is the only one who really lives, who is the ultimate being, the ultimate true being. No one makes it live. He didn't begin at some stage. He always was, is, and always will be. He makes everything else live. Nothing is there that justifies him. He justifies everything. And so that's called chai be'etzem. That's called essentially alive. The closer we are to Hashem, the more we also can develop this amazing type of life. Kedusha, holiness, unity, truth, all of these are synonyms to, to, to essence. If it's truly alive, that means that it's essence. If it's truly true, then it means that it's essence. And the same thing for all the other adjectives that we use. Okay, let's go back to page 48. The four levels of Torah interpretation. Pardes. Pardes is an is a acronym of Pshat Remez Sod. Okay, the life and vitality which the teachings of Hasidus infuse into all aspects of the world, the miniature world of man and the real literal world at large, issue from the vitality from the vitality that Hasidus infuses into all elements of the Torah and are generated from that life force for all elements of the creation are drawn from and derived through the Torah in the Torah itself there are four levels of interpretation Pshat, Remez, Rush, Sod and the teachings of Hasidus imbue each one with life and vitality that is in addition to the explanations which Hasidus gives to various subjects within all four parts of the Torah in general which negates the common misconception. That's pretty clear. That Chassidus arose in order to explain only the esoteric part of the Torah. Page 50 at the top. In addition to that, the learning of Chassidus also infuses life into every subject in all parts of the Pardes, the acronym for Pshat, Remez, Drush, and Sod, which we learn in the Torah. And the subject then lives in an entirely different manner within an essential life force. The vitality strikingly illuminates and profoundly deepens one's understanding of the idea. Mm -hmm. Wow. So we're going to have a, a short example here. But on page 53, I'm going to try to get there, at least we can start touching upon that now, is the Moda'ani. Such an amazing interpretation. The truth is that um, Moldani was the subject of our Kabbalah Cafe this past Friday. But this is gonna. This is the source. This is where I got it from. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're gonna learn it in a much, much, in a much deeper way, of course. Okay. Dugma an analogy of to this concept, is benigla the Torah and the revealed parts of the Torah and in Jewish law. It says in the, the Mishnah, I believe, um, as follows. 
כל העבודות יום הכיפורים, we know the Kohen Gadol did many עבודות, special, special services in the Beit HaMikdash on Yom Kippur, אינם קשירות אלא בו. Only he, he's the only one who can do this. He's the representative of Am Yisrael on the holiest day of the year to carry out these avodot, these work, these services. The Kohen HaGadot. כמו שקדושת יום כיפור מועילה לעבודה המיוחדת יום כיפור, just like the holiness of יום כיפור, helps for the special avoda, which is allocated for יום כיפור, כך, so too, היא פועלת גם בהתמידן ומוספן לשבת. המשתייכים מצד עצמם וכל ימי השנה, שגם הם מתקשים, מתקדשים בקדושתו של יום הכיפורים. So also the Kedusha, the holiness of Yom Kippur, also infuses specialty, spirituality into the regular quote-unquote services that are The regular services that are done, quote unquote regular. The regular can mean every day, and regular can mean every Shabbos, because it's regular, it's every Shabbos. So it's, it's definitely much more common than Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is just one, 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 year, one day a year. So even though it's only one day a year, Yom Kippur, nevertheless, it carries over its uniqueness on some level also to every Shabbat, every Chag, and also in a sense to every day of the year. Just as an example, where we see that every day can have, uh, can have a little part of Shabbat, we say in the song of the day that the Levi and the Levites used to sing in the Beit HaMikdash, Hayom Yom Rishon Bashabbat. First day of Shabbat. Hayom Yom Sheni Bashabbat. And so too for all the days of the week. The literal translation is Shabbat means the week. Shabbat is also doesn't only mean the seventh day, it also means week. In, in, the, in the Talmud, Shabbat also means week. But on a deeper level, every day has a little bit of Shabbat. Every day when we daven, that's, that's the time of Shabbat. We put our phones away, we focus only on Hashem. We try our best at least. At least, at least for Shmona Esrei, we try our best for the entire davening. Mm -hmm. We try also when we learn Torah. That's like a Shabbat. That's the part of Shabbat of the day. So we're allowed to drive on Sunday, but we have to try to have a little bit of the infusion of Shabbat. Even deeper said, the previous Shabbat inspires the first three days of the week, and the last three days of the week are inspired by the next Shabbat. And it also goes even the entirety, in a sense, the Shabbat, Minei Mitbarch and Kulu Yomin, all days of the week are inspired by the Shabbat, and all days of the week are, are elevated by the, the next week's Shabbat. I'm just saying, I'm just trying to bring out in a number of different short anecdotes that Shabbat is not only reserved for the day itself. Shabbat is also shared, so to speak, and can be drawn and can have can draw on forward and also affect the previous days. Same thing over here, Yom Kippur is very holy. But what's the big deal if we go to show on Yom Kippur? It is a big deal, I'm sorry, it is a big deal. But on, a, on an annual level, what's the big deal? You know, a person, uh, some people joke, YK Jews, Yom Kippur Jews. I don't think it's a joke, I think it's very nice that some people, they connect on one, at least one day a year. There are some that don't even do that. But having said that, I think it would be nice if we invited people to come and enjoy the beauty of Shabbat on a regular Shabbat. I think we would see many more people in shul and they, 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 they would be much more accustomed to the beauty of, of Yiddishkeit and not so much uh, only the, the fasting and the bitterness and the sadness. Okay, so now that we understand, we see in Halakha that the Kedusha helps for Yom Kippur, but not only for Yom Kippur, also for the other days of the year, so too, in the second paragraph of page 53, similarly we can say, with regards to the teachings of Hasidus, 
Bechinat Shabbat Shabbaton. It emphasizes more what I said earlier. It's also kind of Shabbat. So just like we understand that by Shabbat, it's not only reserved for Shabbat itself per se, but also Shabbat Shabbaton has a similar thing. The, sh the ultimate Shabbat. The Shabbat of all Shabbat. Shabbat Shabbaton Shabbat Torah. During the year we have a regular day, we have Shabbos, we have Chagim. In the Chagim itself we have bibl Biblical Chagim, we have Rabbinical holidays. But then you have Yom Kippur, that's the Achat Pashana, the one day a year. Also in, in Torah we have the Pshat, Rem, has Drosh, Sod, we just learned earlier the, di the different types of interpretations of the Torah. But then you have the Yom Kippur. The Yom Kippur of, of, of the Torah, what's that? Chassidus. Chassidus is the core, is the essence. So wonder what's the essence of Chassidus? First, let's realize that Hasidus is the essence. Not only we're we trying to find out the essence of Hasidus, Hasidus is the essence of everything, of the entire Torah. That it, it, it accomplishes, it influences all the portions of the Torah. So just like Yom Kippur, which is Achat Basha, influences the entire year on some level, also Hasidus. Hasidus influences in a very meaningful and deep way all of the portions of the Torah, as hopefully we're going to see in the next few minutes. Hidale dachalakim, because the four portions, Pshat, Remez, Rosh, Sot, Shabbat Torah, the four portions of the Torah that we talked about earlier, Hidale dachinot, Nefesh, Ruach, Chaya, Shabbat Torah. Nefesh, Ruach, Nesham, Chaya. We, said, we talked about this right at the beginning of this mimer, that there are five portions of the Neshama. Nefesh, lower level of soul. Chaya, spirit. Neshama, higher level of soul. Then you have the, the, the last two, Chaya and Yechida. Chaya means life, Yechida means unification. Generally speaking, the, three, the th first three portions of the Neshama are that which come into our bodies, mainly our brain, that's the highest part of our, 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 our bodies, but also the right part of the heart, that's where our Neshama rests. Like it says in the Tanya, in chapter 9. In addition to that, there is the, even before that, the two higher levels of the Neshama, Chaya and Yechida, remain above. Mm -hmm. And there is a link, uh, a, uh, an antenna, a radio, uh, internet, internet uh, signal between, <laughs> between the two, and they're very strongly connected. And they send messages back to each other all the time. So we could divide it as saying, Nefesh Ruch Neshama, and then there's the Chaya and Yechida. Or you can say, Nefesh Ruch Neshama Chaya, and then Yechida. Yechida is the highest level. The, the one, the, the, unit, the level which is, is unified with Hashem, united with Hashem. Total unification that you cannot separate between the Neshama. It's, it's, it's part of God. Like it says in the Tanya, chapter 2, mm -hmm. that the Neshama is a part of God. Period. End of conversation. So, if you look at the neshama as being four, verse number five, you can either say, okay, so there's four parts, nefesh, ruach, neshama, and chaya, and yechida is another part, it's just separated, it's, a, it's, it's elevated, it's higher than it. Or you could say, wait a second, yechida is it, yechida is the essence of the neshama. Mm -hmm. You also have the chaya, neshama, ruach, and nefesh, which come from the yechida, but it, you can't even say that, I'm going to exaggerate for a second, you can't even say the five levels in the same breath. They, they're two different planets, not, two different, not only two different worlds, two different planets. Obviously you can't, it's just... So, same thing over here. You have the four part, portions of the inter, ways of interpreting the Torah. Pshat, Remes, Drush, Sod. Then you have Chassidus. That's a league for itself. I'm not going to say you can't say it all in one breath. On the contrary, Chassidus adds life and adds insight and beauty and light into all other four ways of interpreting the Torah. Pshat, Remez, Drush, and Sod. The Torah ta Chassidut hi b'chinat yechida sheba Torah. So if you, look in, if you look in the Neshama, there are five levels of the Neshama. You look at the Torah, also five levels in the Torah. Neshama has Nefesh Ruch, Neshama Chaya, and Yechida. And the Torah has Pshat, Remez, Drush, Sod, and Chassidus. So Chassidus is that Yechida, that unified level which is bonded with Hashem with one, in one bound. Inseparable. 
ומצד גילי היחידה, when you're able to reveal this יחידה, מתעלים גם הנפש שלך ונשמה חיה כנה. Then all of the other four levels of the נשמה also become uplifted. So once again, just like by the נשמה, when you use the יחידה to elevate the other four, the first, the lower four levels, then you are bringing out their essence because the Yechida is their essence. So too in Torah, it really comes from Torah, but we understand it better from the other way, but so too by Torah, when you succeed to reveal, to reach the core of the Torah, the highest, deepest level, which is the Yechida of the Torah, that's Chassidus, then everything fits into place. It's this light which shines through everything and all questions, all issues become answered. Um, there are a number of stories of the Alta Rebbe. You know, unfortunately, there was a great opposition to Hasidus in, in the earlier days of Hasidus, beginning from the Baal Shem Tov um, and the Magad of Mizrij, even, even, even the, through the Alta Rebbe, the Mittler Rebbe, even the Tzemach Tzedek, and in a sense, even further on, but it became less and less, of course. So the Alta Rebbe had a custom sometimes. He would go to different uh, large, large uh, centers of, let's call them the Lithuanian uh, stream of, of Torah. And basically, it's an all day learn Gemara, which is amazing, and try to inspire them. So sometimes he would give a, a nice Dvar Torah, and the Alta Rebbe gave a Dvar Torah in front of 500 people, then uh, it's a whole different uh, perspective. We talked a couple of weeks ago. I believe about the the Gero, the Vilna Gaon, how it was very close to, to being to, in connected to Alter Unfortunately, he didn't make it, but um, didn't come to, to fruition. But here's the point that I'm coming to. One time, he came to a great shul, the great synagogue of Shklov. There was a, a huge center of of, of hundreds of, of young Torah scholars, and there are a number of stories. So. I want to try to stick to, 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 to this one. I'm not even sure if, if this... You know, I'm going to say both of them. I'm going to say both stories that I wanted to say. I, I'm not sure which one was in Shklov, but they were both in a great sense. So one time he came, and he started singing a nigan. And he said, he took a Mishnah in, in Shabbos, in the tractate Shabbos, the Mishnah says over there, Kol Bali Shir, Yotzim Bishir, Benim Shachim Bishir. Talks about uh, an animal that has a that has a, a leash. If you're allowed to go out on Shabbos uh, carrying a leash, if it's considered part of the animal, uh, a whole, a whole halachic uh, discussion. So shir, play on words. Shir also means a song. So he, he explained that a song touches the neshama, and he sang a nigan. And the story goes that half of the, that yeshiva, he just sang a nigga and he walked out. It wasn't like he gave a major, uh, sometimes he did give a major Talmudic uh, pilpul, a whole essay, a whole, a whole speech, a whole drasha. But sometimes he just said a, a short thing and through the song it just inspired, it just spoke to the neshama. They, they realized, they, they heard the song, the, the neshama heard the song. And they just followed him and they became chassidim of the Alter Rebbe. So there's another story, which is connected with a sixth chapter of Perkei Avot, the Ethics of Our Fathers, that we do every Shabbos, another chapter, throughout the summer months. And the first Mishnah in chapter 6, it says, um, Rabbi Meir Omer, Rabbi Meir says, Kol... Kol Ha'osek Torah. Lishma, whoever learns Torah for the sake of Torah itself, zoche lidvarim harbe, will merit many things. And then there's a whole list of 20 or 25 things that one merits. It's a very high level. Most times people learn something, um, you know, for whatever, whatever. There could be different reasons. I don't want to put anyone down. Learning Torah is good however you learn the Torah. But sometimes learn Torah just, just for the sake of learning Torah. Not, not, not to become a rabbi, not to become a genius, not to, make, uh, not to teach people and earn money. Just for the sake of learning Torah, that's the greatest mitzvah. 
So it's, it's a, one of the things over there, it says, one of the list, one of the 20, 25 things in the list is, Umgalinlo Raze Torah. They revealed to him from above the secrets of Torah. He says, I don't see over here any secrets of Torah. Just, just, which, which, it's okay to learn, don't get me wrong, to learn the, the nigla, the revealed part of Torah is wonderful. But if you were really, basically, if you were really learning Torah Lishma for the sake of Torah, then you would have some chassidus over here. Once again, he turned around and a whole bunch of people followed him. They realized that, that there's something majorly missing. So, it's the second story which is more connected to our subject that Megalin later Lora Ze Torah they revealed to him the secrets of the Torah that's connected with the highest level learning Torah. That's what we just said. That's Yechida. That's the highest level of the Neshama. That's the highest, deepest level of learning Torah. And when you reveal the Yechida, then all of the four levels of the Neshama, the other levels also become elevated. Okay. Let's start um, ch- chapter 9, Tet. Hanyanim Shabbat Torah, Harein Beribu Lenkets. The subjects of Torah are many to no end, to no number, no limit. So, how do you choose which part of Torah to give an example of? Where you'll see how Pshat, the simple meaning of the Torah, learns this. Remez, hint, Drush, deeper learning, and Sod, secret. We have to choose something very fundamental in order to bring across this point as a great example what, how to, Hasidus is the Yechida, how Hasidus is the, the essence of the entire Torah. When the Vayar, we will explain B'derach Hefsher, perhaps, the Rebbe is very humble, perhaps. B'derach <laughs> Hefsher. If, if, if the Rebbe says it, he doesn't... <laughs> It's quite, it's quite certain, it's not, it's not a maybe, but I'll call upon him at least Inyan Echad Torah. This one subject in Torah will be given an example. Kamoshal Pi Pshat. We'll explain how the, the, the learning as far as interpretation of Pshat. Al Pi Remez, hint, Al Pi Drush, deeper learning, Val Pi Sod, and a mystical interpretation. The Etachayud Rabirut Omek, and the life and the clarity and the depth. Shetarata Chasidut Machnisa, that the teachings of Chasidus infuse and give and, and bring in the whole Dalad HaChalakim Shabo and all four portions of it. We may know much from there we can learn Shekenu that it is so B'chol Nyan Shabbat Torah and all the other subjects of the Torah. Ha'inyan Shenevcharo Tov Tor Dugma the subject that we're going to use as an example I'm so happy we got to this at least to start the subject Mode Ani Lefanacha I'll turn to page 55. Mode Ani Lefanacha The first words that are meant to come out of our mouths. The moment that we open our eyes, we do our first blink in the morning, immediately. We're supposed to say, Modani Lefanacha Thank Hashem. We talked at the Kabbalah Cafe, just an interesting, uh, an interesting anecdote, that there was, um, prof- there was a whole conference in, in, in Washington, I think, and uh, there were a lot of, a lot of um, professors, and they were talking about why, unfortunately, Hashem Yerachim, there are people, there's a very high rate in the first 12 seconds after a person wakes up, why there's uh, either fainting or seizures, God forbid. Um, and so they had different explanations that when you sit up, then it jerks the, the brain and the, there's a massive, uh, the, the, the blood, a, a massive exit of blood from the brain. And so therefore you should wait at least 12 seconds before you actually get up. And then one Jewish professor raises his hand and says, it's exactly the modani lefanacha is before you do anything, before you sit up, before anything, you just open your eyes. See, modani takes about ten or twelve seconds to thank Hashem from all your hearts for giving you back your soul. Mm-hmm. So even before washing the hands by your bed side and, and all, just thanking Hashem. That's that's the number one. So it's literally the first thing chronologically that we do it in the day, but it's also in a sense the greatest. In a sense, the greatest tefillah, the greatest action that we do to thank Hashem as the first thing in, in our day. Let's do the English, page 52, starting from the significance of the prayer Modani. 
And then the Rebbe is going to explain why he chose this one. Needless to say, the subjects discussed in the Torah are boundless and inexhaustible. Did I say that correctly? Yes. You can erase that from the... <laughs> or keep it on, you know. Let's just flow with the current. We will attempt to explain only one topic in the Torah as it is interpreted according to the Pshat, according to Remez, according to Drush, and according to Sod. And then consider it in light of the vitality, illumination, and depth that Hasidus brings to each of these four, uh, four approaches. From the analysis of this one topic, we will learn that all of the conclusions also hold true for the rest of the Torah. The topic we will choose for an example is Moda Ani Lefanecha, the morning prayer I offer thanks to you, living Hashem, living and eternal King, for having restored my soul within me with mercy. Your faithfulness is great. Okay. Why did the Rebbe choose this subject to give us insight into how essential and how deep Hasidus is? Ki Aleph, number one. Since a person needs to get himself accustomed to say Modani, like it says in Shulchan Aruch, immediately when you wake up from your sleep. So it says in the Shulchan Aruch, you score at Hashem through this, you remember Hashem Haomeda love, which is upon him, and he will rise with, with, uh, what's the word? Say Over here it says it with that's a very fancy word. One day I'll learn that word it's with zeal. zeal. And as someone ex explained in the at the Kabbalah Cafe that even though it says in the Shulchan a very beautiful insight, someone added Moshe. He said that that it says Yakum Kari should rise like a lion. So one of the tzaddikim explained doesn't mean jump up like a lion. As I said before, it's not safe. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? That with an ashama of a lion, with enthusiasm, inner enthusiasm, but to be careful how you know, you can't just, uh, so in other words, instead of, like, uh, instead of just sleeping in or something or something like that, when you, you wake up, you open your eyes, wake up. So, so get up and, and serve Hashem as soon as possible. Like, like, uh... Bezrizos. Bezrizos, exactly. The best word is, 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 is the Lashon Kaidish. I agree with you. Harei Amir this saying, Yisod Vereshiti Lavodot Adam. This is a foundation and a beginning, a jump start for the, ser the person serving Hashem. Kiyum kol haor ochoba Torah to fulfill all of the lessons of the Torah. Ulechayav, and for his life, b'meshach kol hayom, for his entire day. Then he goes to sleep at night, he retires, then he wakes up in the morning and he's all, all energized again. So this is the beginning of the day, like we said in the shir, that a person wants to wake up like a lion, you have to go to sleep like a lion. But if a person goes to sleep not like a lion, then how's it, how do you expect to wake up like a lion? So you have to, also going to sleep is also part of it. That's why... It's, uh, we have instructions also how to go to sleep, like how to eat and all these things. The Torah tells us everything. Because if we go to sleep properly, then Be'ezrat Hashem, we wake up properly, we can serve Hashem for a beautiful day ahead. So that's number one. It's simply the foundation and the beginning, the offset, the, the, the jump start of the entire day. Number two, reason number two why the Rebbe chooses Moda Ani, to be the example of why Hasidus is so special. Tochan Amirazu, the quality, the idea behind this saying is Shahu. Lhit bonen miyad, to contemplate immediately. Lefnei miu shochev, in front of who is the person laying? Lefnei melech, malchei amalachim akadosh baruchu. In front of the king of all kings, the Almighty One, blessed be. Kamosh Katuva says in the verse, Halo et ashmaim taratzanim aleh. Hashem says, I fill the entire heavens and the entire earth. So you're thinking, you're laying there, you're, you're thinking, whoa, what, what am I doing? As the king of kings right here, I'm laying in my bed. It's, 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 it's a realization that if you, if you 
if you take it in properly, you can really keep this theme throughout the entire day. Wow, what am I doing? I'm walking in the street. Am I acting properly? Hey, what, am I eating properly? Am I controlling myself? I don't know. There's, there's a million things that we that every, every every moment of the day, this this can be a deciding point where to go, what to do, how to do it. Ken, here we go. Ken yachshov b'chol asakav v'nyanav. So, to a person should think in all of his business, deal, all of his dealings, and all the subjects. V'zeh klal gadol b'torah. This is a great rule in the Torah. Ubemaalot at tzadikim and in the in the greatnesses of the righteous. Haolchim lufnei alukim that walk in front of Hashem. Moshe Kotuv says in the verse that King David, David the Melech says, Shiviti Hashem lenegdi tamid. David the Melech says, Excuse me, please. I place Hashem in front of me always. For, for David the Melech, Hashem was always there, right there in front. That's exactly what we just said. It's like when, when you're laying there, you, you think to yourself, you're not doing anything, you're not like involved in anything, you just woke up. So you're saying, you just woke up, you're about to serve Hashem. Hashem, wow. He's, he's, of course I gotta act properly. It's like, it's like uh, a pure way of, of realization that Hashem is in control. Totally. Zotomeret, that means to say, that's, this is how the entire day should be. So, it's not just the beginning, but it's also it also sets the tone for the entire day. Gimel, reason number three, why the Rebbe chooses Modani, because Kol Hanal, everything we learned earlier, Avodat Adam Lekono, a person serving Hashem, Aharezeh Al Yideh Akdamat Ne'or Mishnei Toba Alav Ba'avlei Ha'olam. The concept of waking up from your sleep is also a configurative idea of waking up from the slumber in the nonsense of the world. Kilshon Rambam Ayyadua, as the Rambam writes, but the shofar. When we hear the shofar, what are we supposed to think? Hello, wake up from your slumbers. Uru Yesheni Mishnaschem. Wake up, sleepy heads. No, that's my, it's a free translation. <laughs> wake up, your sleepers, from your sleep. Wake up and serve Hashem. Well, that's a shofar. Wake up, come on, what's going on? We have, to, we, have, we have a job to do. We're here for a reason. So too, this concept of waking up from your sleep is that modani. Hey, gotta wake up, not just physically, but also emotionally and, 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 how, and how I act. Also, I gotta wake up. Shouldn't be involved in, in, in nonsense. In the parentheses, this is beautiful. And from the, according to this, you can understand the statement that the, that the Rebbe Rashab, Rabbi Shalom Dov Ber, that's my little Dovi, he has a name after the, five, uh, the fifth Rebbe, Dovi, Dov Ber. That's, that, and the Rebbe Rashab said this as a child, because the Rebbe's opinion was that a tzaddik is a tzaddik even when he's a child. Like I said earlier, that the Rebbe himself said a half a year after the passing of, his previous, of the previous Rebbe on Gimel Tammuz, what is a Rebbe? A Rebbe is a Rebbe, is like. A rabbi, is a rabbi because he's a rabbi, not because anyone appointed him, and and, and that that is something which which is which is uh, which is very fundamental. So so therefore, also when a, when the rabbi is a child, also you can learn a lot from him because he's a rabbi. Okay, so what so what did the what did the rabbi Rashab ask when he was a child? He probably asked his father or grandfather. At the time, his grandfather was the rabbi, Rabbi Menachem Mendel, the son of Tzedek. What did he say? Asher Nakuda. Beautiful. So he said this, if you look in the sitter, uh, some people make a mistake. They say, I, I thank you, Hashem, living, uh, living King, forever. That he gave me, um, this is how people, I'm, I'm getting to the mistake in a second. Shachzarat Abin Shmati, that you gave me back my neshama. Bechem lo rabba, with a great, great mercy. And when atacha with your ear. But it's not Bechem lo rabba. It's Shachzarat. Yeah, it's very important where you, where you put the dot. You know, you can send an email to someone, and all you did is you made a mistake. You put the, uh, the dot before the A instead of after the A. It's not going to get to the destination. I'm not, I'm not, that's a little bit of exaggeration in this case because Hashem knows what we're thinking. And even if a person put the dot in the wrong, the wrong spot, he, he knows he accepts our tefillah. It's sincere, but still, you got to learn how to say it properly. So, Shechazarta bin Shmati Bechemla, there goes the comma, or in the Siddur it's a period, but it means a comma, it's a dot. 
Rabba Munasacha, your faith is great. So, that dot that's after Bechamla is basically, he's saying, he's, he's a child, that's an amazing insight. What did he say? That's the, the dot, that's the, 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 the foundation, that's the quintessential point of the entire day. And what did he say? What did he add? In Yiddish, it sounds the best. Farspreiten. You have to spread it out. Take that dot from the beginning of the day and just carry it out throughout the entire day. And we, we can elaborate on that. Maybe we'll elaborate in the next year, Bezrat Hashem, about what it means to take a dot and to carry it through a number of stations and to, to, to keep focused. Because it's not so easy, especially in a world like today, that there are so many distractions. So many distractions in the street, in the, in, in the palm of your hand. It, it, so it's the challenge of keeping to the dot, keeping to the essence, is that much greater. We have to try our best. We have to try our best. So thank you all for joining us. We started touching upon the Modani, and Bezat Hashem, in the next year, we're going to continue, and we're going to learn uh, deeper into this idea of the essence of Hasidus. Looking forward to seeing all of you tomorrow morning at 7.30. And also uh, Thursday night for the big event at the Mayanot Shul, 28 Narka Street. Tadarabah. <laughs> <laughs>